Hello booktube, this is Jack the Rambling Raconteur, and I'm here, I uh, finally got over my head cold for this week, but I've uh, been eagerly working through James Boswell's London Journal, written when he was uh, just 22, and I thought I'd uh, just share some thoughts on it. Bozzy is uh, one of the writers I uh, first encountered uh, just out of college and uh, dipped into just some either passages from his journal, passages from the life of Johnson, and found he could be outrageous, absolutely hysterical, very, very witty and funny. I'm wearing what is probably my single most outrageous shirt, in part because Bozzy is, is quite possibly one of the single most outrageous human beings who's ever existed, who's ever lived. Um, there, there are some who have derided him as just a, a hack who got lucky hanging out with witty or comical people and transcribed everything funny that they said. And later on as a drunkard wrote a biography. And that, that does a disservice to him uh, he is, he is not merely those things. <laughs> I will say that James Boswell is one of the most outrageous humans who's ever lived. And, um, there, <laughs> he is not a good person. James Boswell was, was not a good person. I think we have to, we have to own, uh, especially in 2020, Bozzy has some issues. He, um, like plenty of, of people from his time, and even in our time, he views women as, as beneath men, uh, less intelligent, uh, less good, less capable, um, utterly inaccurate. But uh, he, he has other issues just beyond being sexist. Um, he's, he's not a particularly good person. There, his, and his journal reveals all of that. Um, his journal is fascinating to me. Having and, and I, I have read the life of Johnson. I read that um, while I was kind of taking some intermittent uh, paternity leave when my first daughter was born. It was a book I could sort of jump into at any point, whether I was up, you know, giving a bottle at uh, one a.m. or you know, in three in the afternoon, and I just had twenty spare minutes to read uh, and, and couldn't really fall asleep. So that was when I read uh, Boswell's great biography, uh, The Life of Samuel Johnson. The London Journal is fascinating because it gives us an intimate look at a man who is essentially the world's greatest gossip on some level. He and and he's he's already that at 22. He has an uncanny ability to remember conversation, to remember witty little remarks, and he remembers them for 30 years. There are, there are conversations that are uh, recounted here in the journal from the 1760s when he first meets Samuel Johnson that he doesn't write until 20, 30 years later and he writes them for, from memory without even access to his journals. And, and it's astonishing that his memory is that profound. Um, he, he, there's a statement in uh, the Viking portable Johnson and Boswell, which this is not what I read, um, but I, 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 I have this copy. The editor of it says that Boswell remembered with wit. So he wasn't necessarily just transcribing comical things everyone around him said. He was, he, he was very good at distilling all of those very comical little witty remarks and the, and the conversations that they had. And he did that throughout his entire life. But we see him at the age of 22, uh, a week after he'll have had encounters, he'll sit down and from memory sketch out whole conversations or parts of conversations, which it's astonishing for a person to have that type of talent. And, and he had it to perfection. Um, and that's part of what makes the journal so fascinating is we get to see the, the young Boswell in a, a person who is in a sense, the greatest gossip who ever lived operating in his early twenties. The other part that's really, really interesting to me is it reveals the an aspect of Boswell that we often miss when, when there's he's dismissed as this 
lucky hack who was loitering in taverns with intelligent people and um and just happened to be there right place right time and just wrote some stuff down and then later on was you know an absolute fool and, and drunk um he is an example of those individuals who so desperately want to be in that upper echelon of, of whatever society they desire. He wants so badly to be there. And, and, and we, we see that with uh, when we're younger, where you want to be part of an in crowd or you want to be on a certain team or you want to be in a certain group or sit at a certain table at lunch in school or even uh, be invited to happy hour with certain people at work. Boswell takes that to an exponential degree. Um, and and there, there are very few people from history who I think have that, that uh, th there are many who have that desire. There are very few from history who have that desire, who reach that point and then become so jealous of, of uh, and possessive of guarding that sense of society. Uh, Cicero from the late Roman Republic and Alexander Hamilton, uh, in, in the uh, latter 1700s are sort of examples of that, of people who were not born into the, that, that upper echelon of society, but found their way there and then just became the most jealous guardians uh, and the most elitist and exclusive individuals. And Boswell is very much that type of person. He absolutely, he's a, he's a monarchist. He, uh, he is disdainful. He is, he's a liar. He's, a conniver. He thinks he's better than everybody else. But you also see <coughs> within his journal, the there are aspects of himself where he, he really does recognize what an absolutely reprehensible person he can be. There are other things he doesn't recognize. He, the way he treats women is awful. The way he treats his landlord and, a, a, you know, just abuses others is awful. There's one scene where he flat out attempts to assault, uh, a streetwalker, and then while dressed up pretending to be a, a, a veteran soldier. Um, and then at the end of that entry in his journal, he goes on about how it was a real comfort to me that, you know, even though I was dressed up this way and was acting like such a loser, uh, every, everybody could tell I was a gentleman in disguise. And so you get this sense of, of he was kind of, he was an absolute creep at times. And, and I think we have to recognize that with Boswell. If if you're interested in reading something where there are ethics and and reckonings and, and reality, that all did happen in Boswell's life. It doesn't necessarily happen in, in this, the about 10 months covered by this journal. However, he, he also reveals a fascinating side of the person who's trying to climb and is is rejected and shunned. He attempts to get into the guards and and sort of toady and and be a sycophant. And the London society sometimes has nothing to do with him. And you can tell like the pain of his rejection and his desire. He absolutely desires to rise in society and, and will do whatever he can. And he's born to enough wealth in Scotland that he can do that. He's he's a a member of the Scottish nobility at a time where. Uh, Scotland has, has somewhat fallen out of favor and, and uh, due to dynastic struggles over the past hundred-ish years in England. And he, he knows that he's going to have to have some talent to rise. You know, we think of the talented Mr. Ripley, uh, the, the saying, everybody has to have one talent, what's yours? Boswell's turned out to be that he could truly remember whole conversations for decades and then transcribed them faithfully. And he remembered he remembered them in a way that made, like, he, he had a little editor built into his memory to help remember those conversations as just a bit funnier than they probably actually were. I do want to uh, read a couple of pages to give a, a taste of what this involves. So he has one where he's, uh, he's conversing with some friends, um, and Boswell goes, well, I admire Gray, Thomas Gray, Prodigiously, I have read his odes till I was almost mad. And another uh, poet returns, well, they are terribly obscure. We must, be his, uh, we must be historians and learned men before we can understand them. And then another person says, and why not? He is writing 
to, he's not writing to porters or carmen. He's writing to men of knowledge. And so you see this sense of, um, you see this sense of, of who Boswell hangs out with. They, they really are elitist. They think they're better than everybody else. At, at another point, Boswell, to show what a, what a rough and ready adventurer he is, says in uh, one letter, and he's trying to get a commission into the most prestigious regiment, and he goes, uh, I should be very happy. I have an independent spirit. I think a Welsh rabbit and porter with freedom of spirit better than Ortolans and Burgundy with servility. Mm. Ortolans and Burgundy, no less. And then finally, we're brought to his, his the, the single, probably most important moment in Boswell's life, which is where he meets with Sa the great Samuel Johnson, who was already established as a brilliant writer and critic and and had, had written a dictionary, the famous Johnson's uh, Dictionary. And uh, his first encounter, he goes, I knew his moral antipathy at the Scotch. I cried to Davies, don't tell him where I came from. However, Davies tells Johnson, he's from Scotland. Mr. Johnson, said I, indeed I come from Scotland, but I cannot help it. Sir, replied he, that I find is what a very great many of your countrymen cannot help. Mr. Johnson is a man of a most dreadful appearance. He is a very big man, is troubled with sore eyes, the palsy, and the king's evil. He is very slovenly in his dress and speaks with the most uncouth voice. Yet his great knowledge and strength of expression command vast respect and render him very excellent company. He has great humor and is a worthy man, but his dogmatical roughness of manners is disagreeable. I shall mark what I remember of his conversation, and so he shall. So that's the, the London Journal of James Boswell. It's a fascinating read, but there, there are absolutely moments in Boswell's life that he faithfully encounters, and sometimes he's quite smug, and, and they can be unpleasant, I think, especially to our modern sensibilities. But it's a fascinating glimpse at, at a, a, climb, a social climber, a grasper, who will truly stop at nothing to rise, and who has a prodigious memory for quite comical, witty little encounters, as the, the, the critic said. Uh, he remembered with wit. The other uh, book that it sort of reminded me of is the fictional Flashman series by George MacDonald Fraser, where we're given a glimpse into the 1800s, into Victorian military life and the aristocracy, and uh, Fraser makes it very, like, Flashman's a liar and a cad and a cheat, and absolutely reprehensible and we're getting his side of that story and, and and through it a side of how venal this society as a whole is and an, uh, you know another set of reads so if you've read those those and you're looking for a memoir or looking for some nonfiction, the london journal is interesting i'll be looking for other uh copies of of the journal either the paperbacks or maybe some cheaper used uh hardbacks of the yellow edition and i'm definitely interested in seeing uh what else uh what else exists in terms of the Boswell journals? I don't know if anybody has read any of the later ones. I'd be very interested in hearing more about them. So I'll be back soon. Thanks. Bye, BookTube.